from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. This is theCUBE Virtual, I'm your host, John Furrier. Normally we're there in person, a lot of great face-to-face, -face, but not this year with the pandemic. We're doing a lot of remote interviews. Got a great, great content guest here, Rebecca Wheatley, who's the senior director and senior principal engineer at Intel, for Intel's hyperscale strategy and execution. Rebecca, thanks for coming on. A lot of great news going on around Intel and AWS. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me, John. So tell us first, what, what's your role at Intel? Because obviously compute is being reimagined. It's going to the next level and we're seeing the sea change with COVID-19 putting a lot of pressure on faster, smaller, cheaper. This is the cadence of Moore's law. This is kind of what we need more horsepower. This is a big theme of the event. What's, what's your role at Intel? Oh, well, my team looks after joint development for product and service offerings with Intel and AWS. So we've been working with AWS for more than 14 years on various projects, collaborations that deliver a steady beat of infrastructure service offerings uh, for cloud applications. So data analytics, AI, ML, uh, high performance computing, internet of things, you name it. <laughs> We've had a project or a partnership, several in those domain spaces. Uh, and thanks to that relationship, you know, today customers can really choose from over 220 different instance types on AWS's global footprint. So those feature Intel processors, FPGAs, AI accelerators and more. And it's been incredibly rewarding an incredibly rewarding partnership. You know, we've been covering Intel since SiliconANGLE and theCUBE was formed 10 years ago. And this is, we've been to every reInvent since the first one, which is kind of a smaller one. Intel's always had a big presence. You've always been a big partner and we've always appreciated the, the contribution to the industry. Um, you've been there with, with Amazon from the beginning. You've mm -hmm. seen it grow. You've seen Amazon Web Services become a big important player in the enterprise. What's different this year from your perspective? Well, 2020 has been a challenging year, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I was deeply moved by the kinds of partnerships that we were able to join forces on with Intel and AWS uh, to really help those communities across the globe and to address all the different crises. Because it, it hasn't just been one. This has been a year of, of multiple, um, sometimes it feels like rolling crises. So when the pandemic broke out in India in March of this year, there were schools that were you know, forced to close, obviously, to slow the spread of the disease. And with very little warning, a bunch of students had to find themselves in remote school, out of school. Uh, so the Department of Education in India engaged Career Launcher, which is a partner program that we also sponsor and partner with. And it really, they had to come up with a distance learning solution very quickly uh, that you know really would provide children access to quality education while they were remote for as long as they needed to be. So Career Launcher turned to Intel and to AWS. We helped design an infrastructure solution to meet this challenge. And really, you know, within a first, the first week, more than 100 teachers were instructing classes using that online portal. And today it serves more than 165,000 students and it's going to accommodate more than a million over this year. Um, to me, that's just a perfect example of how COVID comes together with technology to rapidly address a major shift in how we're approaching education in the times of the pandemic. Um, we also you know, saw kind of a climate change set of cha challenges with the wildfires that occurred this year in 2020. So we worked with a partner, Ronan, as well as a partner who's a partner with AWS and Intel and used the EC2, C5 instances that have the second gen beyond scalable processors and we use them to be able to help the Australian researchers who were dealing with that wildfire increase over 60 fold the number of parallel wildfire simulations that they could perform so they could do better forecasting of who needed to leave their homes, how they could manage those scenarios. Um, and we also were able to work with them on a project to actually thwart the extinction of the Tasmanian devils uh, in also in Australia. So again, that was you know, an HPC application and basically by moving that to the AWS cloud and leveraging those EC2 instances, we were able to take their analysis time from 10 days to six hours. And that's the kind of thing that makes the cloud amazing. 
right? We work on technology. We hope that we get to empower people through that technology. But when you can deploy that technology at cloud scale and watch the world solve problems faster, that has made, I would say 2020, um, unique in the positivity, right? Yeah, you don't want to wish this on anyone, but that's a real upside for societal change. I mean, I love your passion on that. I think this is a super important worth calling out that the cloud and the cloud scale with that kind of compute power and differentiation, you get faster speed to value, not just horsepower, but speed to value. Yeah. This is really important and it saves lives, it changes lives. You know, this is classic change the world kind of stuff and it really is on center stage on full display with COVID. I really appreciate uh, you making that point. Uh, really, it's awesome. Now with that, I got to ask you as the strategist for hyperscale at Intel, um, this is your wheelhouse. You get the passion mm -hmm. for the cloud. What kind of investments are you making at Intel to make more advancements in the cloud? Can you take a minute to share your vision and what Intel's working on? Sure, I mean, obviously we're known more for our semiconductor set of investments, but there's so much that we actually do kind of across the cloud innovation landscape, both in standards, open standards and, and bodies to enable people to work together across solutions across the world. But really, I mean, even with what we do with Intel Capital, Right, we're investing, we've invested in a bunch of born in the cloud startups, many of whom are on top of AWS's infrastructure. Uh, and I have found that to be a great source of insights, partnerships, you know, again, how we can move the needle together to, to go forward. So in the space of autonomous learning, Anadot is one of the um, startups we invested in and they've really worked to use methodologies to improve European telco network monitoring. So they were actually getting a ton of false positives running in their previous infrastructure. And they were able to take it down from 50K false positives a day to 50 using again, AI on top of AWS in the public cloud, um, using obviously Anadog, you know, technology in, in the space of AI. Um, we've also seen Capsule 8, which is an amazing company that's enabling enterprises to, enterprises to modernize and migrate their workloads without compromising security. Again, fully born in the cloud, able to run on AWS and help those customers migrate to the public cloud with security. Uh, we have found them to be an incredible partner. Um, using simple voice commands on your, voice, on your smartphone, Hypersonics is another one of the companies that we've invested in that lets business decision makers quickly visualize insights, insights from their disparate data sources. So really large unstructured data, which is the vast majority of data stored in the world that is exploding, being able to quickly discern what should we do with this? How should we change something about our company using the power of the public cloud? And one of the last ones that I absolutely love to cover kind of the wide scope of the ways that cloud is changing the innovation landscape. Um, Model 9, which is basically a company that allows people to uh, take decades of insights out of their mainframe data and do something with it. They actually use Amazon's cloud service, the cloud storage service. So they were able to take, again, mainframe data, use that and be able to use Amazon's capabilities to actually create you know, meaningful insights for business users. So all of those, again, are really exciting. There's a bunch of information on the Intel sponsor channel with demos and videos with those customer stories and many, many, many more uh, using Amazon instances built on Intel technology. You know, that Amazon has always been about startup born in the cloud. You mentioned that Intel's always been investing with Intel capital um, generations of great investments, great call out there. Can you tell us more about what um, Amazon technology, about the new offerings that Amazon has that's built on Intel. Because as you mentioned at the top of the interview, there's been a long-standing long partnership since inception and mm -hmm. it continues. Can you take a minute to explain some of the offerings built on the Intel technology that Amazon's offering? Well, I'm always happy to talk about Amazon offerings on Intel products. That's my day job. <laughs> um, you know, really we've spent a lot of time this year listening to our customer feedback and working with Amazon to make sure that we are delivering instances that are optimized for fastest compute, uh, better virtual memory, greater storage access. And that's really being driven by a couple of very specific workloads. So one of the first that we are introducing you know, here at reInvent is the M5ZN instance. 
And that's really a high frequency, high speed, low latency network variant of what was, you know, the traditional Amazon EC2 M5. Um, it's powered by second gen Intel scalable processors, the Cascade Lake processors. And really these have the highest all core turbo CPU performance from Xeon scalable processors in the cloud with a frequency up to 4.5 gigahertz. That is really exciting for HPC workloads, uh, for gaming, for financial applications, sim simulation modeling applications. These are ones where you know automation um, in the automotive space, in the aerospace industries, energy, telecom, all of them can really benefit from that super low latency, high frequency. So that's really what the M5ZN is all about. Um, on the VR's two others that we've introduced here today, and that's the R5B, and that is that can utilize up to 60 gigabit per second of Amazon Elastic Block Storage, and really again that bandwidth and the 260 IOPS that it can deliver is great for large relational databases. So the database file systems kind of workload, this is really where we are super excited. And again, this is built on um, Cascade Lake, the second gen. And it takes, it takes advantage of many different aspects of how we are optimizing in that processor. So we, ex we're excited to partner with customers again, using EBS as well as, you know, various other solutions to ensure that data ingestion times for applications are reduced and they can speed the delivery to what you were mentioning before, right? Time to result. It's all about time to result. And the last one is D3EN. So D3EN is really the new D3 instance. It's again on CLX and Cascade Lake. Uh, we offer those for high density with high density local hard drive storage. So very cost optimized, but really allowing you to have significantly higher network speed and disk throughput. So very cost optimized for storage applications. It's got 7x more storage capacity, 80% lower cost given terabyte of storage compared to the previous V2 instances. So we will really find that that would be ideal for workloads in distributed and clustered file systems, big data and analytics, of course, you need a lot of capacity uh, and high capacity data lakes. You know, normally you want to optimize a data lake for performance, but if you need tons of capacity, you need to walk that line. And I think D3EN really will help you do that. Um, and of course, I would be absolutely remiss to not mention uh, that last month we announced the Amazon Web Services uh, partnership with us on an Intel Select solution, which is the first, you know, cloud service provider to really launch an Intel Select solution there. Um, and it's an HPC space. So this is really about in high performance computing developers can spend weeks or months researching, you know, to manage compute, storage, network, software configuration options. It's not a field that has gone fully cloud native by default. And those recipes are yeah. still coming together. So this is where the AWS parallel cluster solution using, it's an Intel Select solution for simulation and modeling on top of AWS. And we're really excited about how it's going to make it easier for scientists and researchers like the ones I mentioned before, but also IT administrators to deploy and manage and just automatically scale those high performance computing clusters in AWS cloud. Wow, you, that's a lot, a lot of purpose built. <laughs> I mean, no, you guys are really nailing, I mean, low latency, you got storage, you got density. I mean, these are use cases where there's real work, workloads that require that kind of specialty and or, I mean, it's beyond general purpose now, you're it's kind of the general purpose of, this, of the use case. This is what cloud mm -hmm. does, this is amazing. Um, final comments this year, I want to get your thoughts because you mentioned cloud service provider, you mentioned the select program, which is an elite thing, right? Okay, we're anticipating more cloud service providers. We're expecting more innovation around chips and silicon and software. This is just getting going. It feels like to me, it's just, the pulse is different this year. It's mm -hmm. faster, um, the cadence has changed. As a strategist, what's your final comments? Where's, where's this all going? Because this is pretty different. It's, it's not what it was pre-COVID. I feel like this is going to continue uh, transforming and being faster. What's your thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, the cloud has been one of the biggest winners in a, in a time of you know, incredible crisis for our world. Uh, I don't think anybody has come out of this time without understanding remote work, you know, uh, 
um, remote retail. And certainly um, a business transformation is inevitable and required to deliver in a disaster recovery kind of you know, business continuity environment. So the cloud will absolutely continue uh, and continue to grow as we enable more and more people to come to it. Um, I personally, I, I couldn't be more excited than to be able to leverage a long-term partnership, the incredible strength of that Intel and AWS partnership, and these partnerships with key customers across the ecosystem. We do so much with ISVs, OSVs, SIs, MSPs, you know, name your favorite flavor of acronym, uh, to help end users experience that digital transformation effectively, whatever it might be. And as we learn, we try and take those learnings into any environment. We don't care where workloads run. We care that they run best on our architecture. And that's really what we're designing to. And when we partner between the software, the algorithms, and the hardware, that's really where we enable the best end user demands and the end user time to insights and the end user time to market. Um, so that's really what I'm most excited about. That's obviously what my team does every day. So that's of course what I'm going to be most excited yeah. about. Um, but that's certainly, that's, that's the future that we see. And I think it is a bright and rosy one. Um, you know, I, I won't say things I'm not supposed to say, yeah. uh, but certainly do be sure to tune into the Cube interview with um, Itan and, you know, uh, also with Shaitan, who's the CEO of Habana and obviously Shaitan is here at AWS uh, as they talk about some exciting new projects in the AI space, uh, because I think that is when we talk about the software, the algorithms and the hardware coming together, the specialization of compute where it needs to go to help us move forward, but also the complexity of managing that heterogeneity at scale and what that will take and how much more we need to do as an industry and as partners to make that happen. Um, that is the next five years of managing, you know, how we are exploding in specialized hardware. Um, so Rebecca, I'm excited about that. Rebecca, thank you for your great insight there. And thanks for mentioning the CUBE interviews. We've got some great news coming. We'll be breaking that as it gets announced on the chips in the Havana labs. It's going to be great stuff. I, I wouldn't be remiss if I didn't call out the Intel um, work hard, play hard philosophy. Amazon has a similar approach. You guys do sponsor the party every year, replay party, <laughs> which is not going to be this year, so we're going to miss that. I think they're going to have some goodies, as Andy Jesse says, planned. But um, you guys have done a great job uh, with the chips and the performance in the cloud. And, and I know you guys have a great partner, cloud service provider customer in Amazon. It's a great showcase. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I hope you all enjoy all of reInvent, even as you adapt to new times. Rebecca Weekly here, Senior Director and Senior Principal Engineer at Intel's Hyperscale Strategy and Execution. Here on theCUBE, breaking down the Intel partnership with AWS. A lot of good stuff happening under the covers in compute. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We are theCUBE Virtual. Thanks for watching.